want to factor a trinomial, do you? <laughs> Me too. It, it, it's like we're soulmates. But, but, but uh, not, not, not really. Uh, yes, factor, factoring trinomials, part one. A lesson from mathforbreakfast.com. The reason I have part one is, is because there'll be part two. Again, I'm already planning ahead for future merchandising and, and sequels uh, for, for uh, you know, lining, lining the pocketbook. No, here we go. Factoring trinomials. We have learned, if you've been watching a prior lesson, you've learned how to factor out a common monomial. And what's so exciting about that is you're going to actually apply it here. Uh, so you're going to build and reinforce that skill uh, so that you can factor a trinomial. Well, let's jump right into this because we don't have much time. Step zero is to read the instructions and to look at the problem. All right, step zero. What in the world is step zero? Really, go to mathforbreakfast.com and also tell your friends about mathforbreakfast.com and where you and your friends can read about step zero. Why a uh, semi-conscious human being would come up with step zero to tell you to do what you're already doing, really. Read about it. All right, factor. Because when I read the instructions here, I see the word factor. And that tells me that I want to split up uh, something into other things that would multiply back to what I started with. Kind of sounds like a backward thing to do. But factor means you end up with things multiplied together. That's factoring. And then so when I look at the problem, I see trinomial. All right. I see I have a trinomial because I have one, two, three terms all added or subtracted together. That makes it a trinomial. Like one, two, three wheels on a vehicle, that makes it a tricycle. So, trinomial, one, two, three, and factor. Well, what do I do when I have that situation? Let's go through it right now. I do step one. Now, what I love about step one, not only does it follow step zero, but it's something you're already familiar with, and that is factor out a common, I'm going to boo com period, mon, or a common monomial abbreviation, common, all right, always check with an exclamation point. Factor out a common monomial. <coughs> well, uh, how do I factor out a common monomial? Well, I click the X up here in the upper right, and I go back to YouTube or, or to mathforbreakfast.com, and I look at the lessons on how to factor out common monomial. But if you already know that, don't click the X. Just stay here, and let's keep going. And, and what we've got is, uh, well, we, we look at our trinomial here, and in this case, we have nothing common to the X squared, the 7X, or the 12. All right, so we tried. We looked at it. I said x squared, 7x, and 12. Is there anything common? Is there a number that divides into all three terms? Nope. Is there a variable that is in all three of them? Not just a couple of them. All three of them. Eh. So we tried. And the value in trying is that if there was one and we didn't try, it would be a pain to finish this problem. Likelihood of success pushing 50% or less, all right? So here we go. We want to always check. One exclamation point is not quite enough. No, really. Two is called for in this situation. All right, nothing common to all of those. Well, brings us to step two. Now, I want to uh, have plenty of room for step two, so I'm going to quickly erase uh, what I've got here because you already know step zero. And, and step one is just doing something you already know. Love how we build on math in mathematics. Use what you already know so you don't have to keep packing more things into your head until you just can't take it anymore. All right, so step two. And step two is, is to multiply. Again, something you already know. We know how to multiply, right? Get somewhere in the grade school you learn how to multiply. So multiply the first and last coefficients, which I'm going to abbreviate coefs, um, all right, and write out the factors. Goodness gracious, to factor, I need to do a lot of factoring, all right? Uh, and, and like I said, it, 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 to, to eat a sandwich, I need to uh, eat the sandwich. 
All right, here's, here's what, what's going to happen here. Don't worry. It, doesn't, it sounds like I'm being circular, but you, you're doing things that you already know how to do. Let's, let's run with that as much as possible. x squared plus 7x plus 12. Notice I left some space here. In fact, I want to I leave even more space. Let me emphasize this. All right, x squared plus 7x plus 12. Emphasize, I need some space up here to give you some critical notes. All right, and, and, but, but first, let me follow the instructions. Multiply the first and last coefficients. Well, the first coefficient is a 1 over there, and the last one is a 12. So really, I have 1 times 12. And when I multiply those together, I, 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 I get 12. Right? I, as some of you have, have called your parents or to your friends, hello, one, 1 times 12, the answer would be, oh, 12, yes. All right, there it is. Uh, the, that math guy, he really knows what he's, what he's doing. So I, I, I multiplied 1 times 12. And, and not only that, but, but I, I, I need to write out the, the factors of 12. Well, here we go. The factors of 12 are, are, are well, what multiplies to give me 12? 1 times 12, that would give me 12. And, and then the question is, OK, now, now what? How do I know if that 1 and 12 matter or are valuable to me? Well, this is when we start talking to the problem. You, too, can talk to your math problems. I recommend in isolation. Um, in my case, I've learned to talk to them out in the public, but uh, that's because I'm comfortable with myself and, and all the voices in, in, in my head. But in, in here, in, in your case, you may be getting used to it. So the problem here is speaking to me. And what I hear the problem saying is, plus tells me to add. Again, it, it's like a, a, a flashback to, to kindergarten or first grade, and, and somebody said plus means add, and you're thinking, I just went to YouTube so some dude can tell me that plus means add. Thank God it was free. All right, just bear with me. Plus means add. It also means same signs. All right, now, uh, guess what? Minus is going to tell me yes, yes, and it will tell you too. Subtract, and it, and it means different signs. All right, so th th this problem is whispering to me, okay? It's, it's the person whisperer. It's whispering to us, and it's whispering plus, add, same signs, minus, subtract, different signs. In this case, I have a plus, so I really don't need to worry about this set of instructions, but I want these notes to be there for you, for no matter whatever the, the, the trinomial is, you'll be able to handle it, power through it, and succeed. Oh, okay, so, so now that I know I need to add, well, let's do that. 1 plus 12, okay, add right there, is equal to 13. And I see the 13, and I look at the 13, and I have really no attachment to the 13. Why? Because back here, my x squared plus 7x plus 12 doesn't have 13. We move on. All right, it means I need to try it again. 2 and 6, they multiply to give me 12. And so when I take the 2 plus the 6, why plus? Because it's saying here, add. Can you hear it? Add. Yes, so, so 2 plus 6, and, and then that's equal to 8. And again, 8, not feeling a connection. All right, no 8s up here. Move on. Finally, we have 3 and 4. Well, not only have we run out of factors, uh, but we are going to be sure that those are the right two factors because 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. And, and at this point, you're probably almost excited because you're thinking, he's going to make me look at this up here and see if I feel a connection. And I do, because the 7 and the 7 and the 7 and the 7 and the... Um, <clears throat> so, yes, that's good. Because I see, yay, check, that's the one I want because it matches up that. So I'm going to take this, all right, keep the three and the four, and I do something with it. Well, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to do step three with it. Step three, split. Okay, that does not mean to click the X and exit the program. No, 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 that means to split as in to split, like chop wood, carry water, all right? Split the middle term, all right, using factors from step two. All right, well, let's see what that means. That means, ah, ah, we're almost getting there, same size. That means I have a 7x here. 
But now I have a 3 and a 4 that add up to 7. So instead of 7x, I'm going to split this up into plus 3x and plus 4x. They have the same sign, both pluses, because the whisperer here, the plus, said same sign. And they both have pluses because this was a positive 7. All right? Positive 7. So I better have a positive 3x plus a 4x, both the same sign, to give me a positive 7x. All right? Well, that's great. But I can't forget about the rest of the problem. All right? These guys, the x squared, again, uh, mathematical terms are emotional beings, too. They don't want to be left out. Not so good on the psyche. All right? So, so uh, the little pitter powder of the heart, the, the sadness, the tears. x squared, here we go. The 12. Don't forget the 12. It's still a positive 12 like it is up here. There, you know, there it is. Coming on down, 12 stays the same. So all I've done is taken this problem, x squared plus 7x plus 12, and made it a little bit bigger than it was before by splitting the middle term. Boom! That's great. I don't see any multiplication going on, so I'm not done factoring. How do I get there? Well, better go to step four. Let's see what happens. So a little bit of a racy racy here. My apologies. Um, but what you do is not erase. Because if you were to go and now erase everything you've written down, you'll get to the end of the lesson and realize you have nothing to work with. Keep your stuff. I'm erasing because I need the extend my whiteboard foundation to kick in here. I now have x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 12. That's what is in your notes. And step 4 says factor out com mon, common monomial, and pairs. All right. Well, pairs are simple. Pairs are like two shoes, all right? Two of them together. Well, when it comes to math, pairs are like, ah, the first two things here. And my common mon is equal to, what's in both of them? An x. Smallest power of x, x to the first in both of them. Over here, the next pair, again, don't get fancy, Take the two, take the two, take the two, whatever. All right, just keep them, keep them simple. And now between these two, the common monomial is equal to, what goes into both of them? A four. Four divides into four. Four divides into 12. No letters that they both have, so I just got the four. Well, factor out common monomials and pairs. I figured out what the common monomials are, but I got to factor them out. So here we go. This is back to lesson one and two from the website or from, from YouTube. You're learning nothing new. You clicked on this site to this particular lesson and learned nothing new. But you know what? That's a good thing. Because you're, you're able to build on what you know, and, and that will help you not get too much stuff jumbled up in here, right? Okay, so x. And then I fill in the parentheses. X times what gives me x squared. X times x gives me x squared. And x times what gives me 3x. X times positive 3. You don't have to sing it unless it really makes you happy. And then I got the plus here. And and and, and, and moving on. So now I, I, I have my 4 here. And so I take out the 4. And again, what do I fill it in with? Well, multiply. 4 times what gives me 4x. 4 times x. 4 times what gives me 12. Positive 3. All right. We followed step four. Factor out the common monomial in pairs. This pair factored into x times x plus 3. This pair factored into 4 times x plus 3. Not quite done yet. The reason we're not done, even though we have multiplication, is that this is all added to this. We want just multiply with multiply. Two things multiply. Let's see what happens. Step five. Pull out the common binomial to the front. All right. Well, here we go. These both have an x plus 3. That's common to both of them. And that x plus 3 can come out to the front. So now I have x plus 3. And what's left? I can't forget about all these other things. That x stays the same, x. I can't forget about the positive 4, plus 4. And now, I have something times something. I know I've factored it. Something times something. Done.